What happened to the box tops? The box tops start off as the DeVilles, a Memphis-based band. By January 1967, the band consisted of Danny Smythe on drums and background vocals, John Evans on guitars, keyboards, and background vocals, Alex Chilton on lead vocals and guitar, Bill Cunningham on bass guitar, keyboards, and background vocals, who was also the son of Suns record artist Buddy Blake Cunningham and brother of B.B. Cunningham Jr., lead vocalist for 1960s Memphis group The Humbrays, and Gary Talley on guitar, keyboards, and background vocals. To avoid confusion with another band recording at the time, the DeVilles of New York, they changed their name to The Box Tops. They went to the studio as The Box Tops, guided by producer Dan Penn, to record Wayne Carson Thompson's song, The Letter. Despite being only two minutes long, the song became an international sensation by September 1967, spending four weeks at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 selling over 4 million copies, earning a gold disc and receiving two Grammy Award nominations. The Hombres Let It Out, Let It All Hang Out, and The Letter were number one and two on the WLS AM Silver Dollar survey from October 20th through 27th of 1967, marking a rare quinella involving two brothers from the same family, which were the Cunningham brothers, each in a different Top 40 act. Following the letter, the band released Neon Rainbow, a song written by Thompson and produced by Penn. In November of 1967, the letter slash Neon Rainbow was released. From late 1967 to mid-1968, the Box Tops recorded three albums in a nine-month span. At American Sound Studio, session musicians like Reggie Young, Tommy Cogbill, Gene Chrisman, and Bobby Womack performed on some of the group's instrumental tracks. On a handful of their records, notably The Letter, as well as all live performances, the actual members of the group played. John Evans and Danny Smythe returned to school in January 1968, escaping the draft. They were replaced by Gentry's bassist Rick Allen, who was born January 28, 1946 in Little Rock, Arkansas. And they were also replaced by Board of Directors drummer Thomas Boggs, who was born on July 16, 1944 in Wynn, Arkansas, and he died on May 5, 2008 in Memphis, Tennessee. In 1968, Cry Like a Baby was a million seller, landing at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. The Hacienda Brothers and Kim Carnes have both covered it. Later that year, I Met Her in Church and Choo Choo Train became minor hits. The band swapped producers near the end of 1968, with Dan Penn being replaced by the Cogbill and Chips Moman team. This group was in charge of the band's final 1968 success, Sweet Cream Ladies Ford March, which debuted on the Hot 100 on Chilton's 18th birthday, as well as all of the other band's subsequent recordings throughout 1970. Thompson's cheery Soul Deep became the group's final U.S. Top 40 entry in the summer of 1969, peaking at number 18 on the Hot 100 in late August. Turn On A Dream, the follow-up single reached number 58 on the Hot 100 and number 29 in Canada. Cunningham departed the box tops in August 1969 to return to school and Harold Cloud took his place on bass. The group's tolerance for the contempt and extortion they received from managers, lawyers, and promoters as team musicians eventually came to an end. According to a 2004 article by Tally on PureMusic.com, the band canceled a December 1969 British tour after arriving in London and discovering that instead of honoring their rider agreement, the local promoter insisted on using the opening reggae acts, toy drums, public address system amplifiers rather than proper guitar amplifiers, and a keyboard with a broken speaker on the tour. The remaining founding members, Tally and Chilton, were ready to move on and disbanded the group in February 1970. However, through early 1970, the Bell record label continued to release new box top singles such as You Keep Tying Up On Me, which reached number 2 on the Hot 100 on March 21st and the 28th of 1970, using previously recorded material. In the early 1970s, the Box Tops moniker, which was controlled by a management corporation, still had some prestige and sales potential. 
Due to a lack of original band members, new studio's ensembles whose members remained unidentified were formed to record new box top songs in Memphis beginning in 1972. Some of the same production professionals who had produced and played on the group's earlier recordings were utilized on these later box tops tracks but no original members. High Records, run by Willie Mitchell, published two singles ascribed to the box tops, one in 1972 called Sugar Creek Woman and the other in 1973, Hold On Girl. Tommy Cogbill co-produced the group's final record, Willoughby and Dale, which was released on the Stax label in 1974. None of these singles charted or received a lot of broadcast, therefore they're usually left out of the box tops retrospectives. Pickwick Records re-recorded The Letter and Cry Like a Baby in 1976 with lead vocalist Alex Chilton and studio musicians. These songs were ascribed to the box tops despite the fact that Alex Chilton was the only member of the group involved. Both recordings were included in the Heartbreakers and Tearjerkers collection, a multi-artist LP set issued in the United Kingdom. Following their departure from the box tops, each of the original members went on to work in the music industry. Chilton's career path included work with Big Star, Taff Falco's Panther Burns, and his own trio as well as producing groups such as The Cramps for a short time. In Memphis, Atlanta, and Nashville, musician Tally worked as a session guitarist and songwriter in a variety of styles. Billy Preston, Hank Ballard, Chips Moman, Billy Lee Riley, Billy Joe Royal, Webb Pierce, Waylon Jennings, Tracy Nelson, Willie Nelson, and Tammy Wynette are among the artists and producers with whom he has collaborated with. He recorded two albums for Apapalooza Records with a group, The Fish Heads and Rice, certified in 1991, and Four Heads in 1994. On Friday, June 29, 1990, the Drifters and the Box Tops performed at Utah Lake State Park as part of America's Freedom Festival in collaboration with Wilson Wood Promotions, Food for Less, KZOL Oldies 96 FM, and Fred Meyer all provide sponsorship for the event. The band's original members, including Chilton, reunited in 1996 thanks to Cunningham's efforts. The group then resumed playing live shows around the world with the release of Tear Off, a self-produced album of new music recorded at Easley McCain Recording. The Tear Off album featured an original song by guitarist Tally named Last Laugh, as well as new recordings of The Letter, I'm in Love, Big Bird, and Keep on Dancing by the Gentries and Eddie Floyd. Chiltern had frequently covered Eddie Floyd's Big Bird in solo concerts since the 1980s. Other tracks on the album showcased the diverse soul, novelty, rock and roll, and country music influences of the band members. The album version of B.B. Cunningham Jr.'s 1959 Memphis novelty single Trip to Bandstand features guitar playing. The Memphis Horns, who later took part in several of the group's concerts, contributed horn arrangements and performances to the record as well. By the year 2000, Barry Walsh, a session musician from Nashville, had taken over for John Evans, who had left the group. The University of Memphis employs Evans. When Picks Fly, a 2001 compilation of music you never imagined you'd hear from diverse artists, include a Blondie cover song the group contributed. Sold out German radio broadcast box tops performances in Germany in 2003, and the band's 2005 tour schedule indicated that several American gigs were scheduled despite the band's members demanding outside the band schedules. On May 29, 2009 at the Memphis Italian Festival, the box tops performed their final show in Memphis. Lead singer Alex Chilton passed away after a heart attack on March 17, 2010. The remaining members of the Box Tops, Bill Cunningham, Gary Talley, and Ron Krasinski, along with Terry Manning, performed a tribute concert in Alex Chilton's honor on July 28, 2010, at New York City's City Winery. Due to persistent fan requests, Bill Cunningham and Gary Talley revived the Box Tops in the middle of 2015. Danny Smythe, at the age of 67, passed away on July 6, 2016. On September 23, 2017, it had been 50 years since the letter had topped the charts. Along with Flo and Eddie of the Turtles, Chuck Negron of Three Dog Night, 
the Association, the Calcils, and Ron Dante of the Archies, Cunningham, Tally, and Rick Levy took part in the Happy Together tour, playing to packed houses across the United States. The Memphis Music Hall of Fame inducted the Box Tops in 2018. And as of July 2022, the Box Tops still have some shows lined up. They're still together. They have a few shows coming up, like I said, around the U.S. I don't know if they'll go international, but for now, they have a few U.S. dates. They're still active. There's still a couple original members in there. So if you want to check them out, there are ways to do it if you live in the U.S. And that's what happened to the Box Tops. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know, give me some of your favorite box top songs and give me some memories you have with them if you've seen them live in concert or if you have a memory of their song. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.